Part 2 of the True Teaching of Jesus, the Pine Cone, and Masonic Secrets of the Silver Bullet. The Chakras, a Speed Round To activate the first, Muladhara Chakra, one must envision the color red, imagine, or intone, its tone of long. The light of this chakra is sparked only from an activated kundalini, which is ruled by Mars, the god of war, or his higher purpose, diplomacy. One either lives, triggered by life, in a constant state of war, or focused on their dreams with supreme indifference and radical acceptance of others, oneself, the world, and life itself. If, in you, good overcomes hate, your dreams overcome your rage, the root chakra is ignited, and the old earthen relics of suffering burn up and purge your soul, like in a fireplace. That also purifies the chestnuts roasting on its open fire, or the testicles in men and ovaries in women. The lesson being that life is not suffering, and one's karma not always gets passed on to the next generation genetically. Because when you consciously reconnect to your original life force from God, you realize your divine birthrights, which are bliss, security, abundance, and prosperity each represented by one of the lotus petals of this chakra. These are your birthrights. Claim them, and realize they're universal. Thus, this must instill in you a sense of peace and passive nonviolence. Now forgive others for the past, and preemptively, for ever getting in your way. When you claim your birthright with respect and forgiveness for everyone, the Svadhisthana second chakra lights up. This respect and forgiveness for everyone must include first and foremost your mother, your father, and yourself. Manifested in you as the mother left moon side of the Ida, whose energy channel, or Nadi, originates from the Muladhara and branches out to the left hip, ruled by Ophiuchus of the other element. And your father, manifested as the right sun side, Pingala, which also originates from the Muladhara and extends to the right hip, ruled by Aries of the fire element. These two energy pathways, or nadis, represent genetic and spiritual inheritances, or karmas, from your mother and father. But, once purified of them and their problems, become the more elemental and purely ethereal forces of the masculine electricity and feminine magnetism. Some spiritual advice. If you feel pain or strain in either of these hip joints, drop it. Drop the memory or memories associated with that pain. These pains all come from the false need for survival. Recall, bliss, abundance, security, and prosperity are your birthrights. You just forgot, and all the melee of life, the first zero to twenty-nine and a half-ish years. And you are what you think, because what you think you attract. And before in the melee of early life, it was easy to forget your birthrights and be convinced that you have to fight to survive, but not anymore, so drop it. From the moment the pain was first inflicted and everything ever since, let it go, let it vanish. You're holding on to it. It is not holding on to you. So let it go, as best you can. 
Divest your energy of all of it. Stop flexing the muscles in that region and straining as though you have to keep carrying that weight. You don't have to. Take back your energy. Remember, it's all mental. And veer your energy and mind toward your own dream life. And relax. Relax into your dream. So, divest, take back, and reinvest in you. And also, forgive yourself as you are manifested in you as the central and neutral spinal sushumna. So, sit up strong and confident. And, when all three are united, the masculine father, the feminine mother, and the androgen neutral child, you can truly begin the ascension to heaven. And, heaven means heaved up or pushed up, meaning through the breath, with eyes closed, and with the anus tightened to entrap this energy, to make it so that it has no choice but to go upwards. Two, the second Svaristana chakra, whose tone is bomb, is activated by envisioning the color orange, and whose element is water. Being in the sacral region filled with water, it is thus called the womb, the virginal womb, and symbolized by the moon and described as watery or merry, Mary, Mar, E, Mar meaning ocean, which are Earth's wombs of life. And this sacral chakra water is also your own baptismal font, where the true baptism of the growing or ascending consciousness takes place. The lesson being, shower others with your forgiveness, love, and light, because when you do so, a light is born, meaning the third Manipura Chakra, which is your own inner sun, made of a fire so pure it is smokeless and does not burn, but simply and purely shines from its own brilliance and incandescence. The color of this chakra is yellow, the tone Ram, and the element, of course, fire. A whirlwind of passion ensues, and, if you are still anally uptight, this whirling passion will have nowhere else to go but up. So, onwards to the fourth Anahata Chakra, whose element is, appropriately, air. The tone yam, and the color green, and whose lesson is, as air and wind are so pervasive that nothing can stop it, wrapping itself equally around skyscrapers as trees and butterflies, to flowing as equally through tunnels to caves and your nostrils, so too the heart's passions know no laws, because the ignited heart chakra doesn't even have the need for windows or doors, because they only imply more walls. And any would merely dissolve in the heart's flames, thus the very meaning of living with an open heart. From here, the other three are automatically activated. As the second principle of correspondence states, as above, so below, so below, as above. As the heart is between three above and three below, being the in-between. What happens below must equally happen above and is symbolized in the chakra symbol for the heart by two interpenetrating triangles and the very meaning behind one of the holiest symbols known to man, the electromagnetic light body or Merkaba. In rapid succession, the fifth Vishuddha throat chakra is activated with its turquoise color the tone ham, ah. 
and the element ether, all attributing to the creation of the Amrita. Amrita is induced by the Vishuddha throat chakra, which is a honey that descends from the pituitary and drains into the back of the throat and sweetens one's speech, endowing one with the voice and words of God's knowledge. The lesson being, one needn't always speak, if so, make it sweet. And the very meaning behind the saying, if you can't be kind, be quiet. Amrita is the honey or nectar from the gods that endows immortality and is activated simultaneously with the pineal gland because the blood of Christos from the seed of life and the holy grail, which has been heaved up along the 33 vertebra of the spine, up the 33 degrees, where all the smoke of the old energies of the old self getting burned up by each chakra flow up and dissipate into the ninth chakra, represented by these clouds, that, once dissolved from the psyche and consciousness, fill one with such euphoria and bliss, so as to make one feel like they're floating on cloud nine. But before it gets there, the blood of Christ from the seat of life bottlenecks, literally, in the neck, where it concentrates in this region ruled by Cetus, which Masonic texts claim was one name meaning the same as Jesus, as the letter J, again, did not come into existence until the 16th century, and was originally written as a style I see, which was easily mistaken for the I, which the J sound was meant to replace, as in the Greek word for Jesus, Jesus. Therefore, Cetus is Jesus, and both are resurrection. Cetus and Jesus were also said to be crucified, or impaled on or by wood. The neck joint is also said to crucify, or fix upon, the head upon the body. And where this crystal-spinal fluid concentrates, until it shoots up, ascends, or ejaculates into the third eye, Ajna Chakra, whose color is blue, its tone, Om, or better yet, Aum, as in A ah for the Alpha and Om for Omega. The chakra is where the energy currents of the Pingala and Ida pierce and penetrate the pineal gland silver bullet, like serpent's fangs or a scorpion's pinch filling up the pineal gland with this spinal fluid, engorging the pineal like a cup, also like an eye pointed up and opened, which overflows like a cup runneth over with this spinal oil, blending it with its own cerebral pineal oil in the claustrum, which is where we get the claws and sense of claws. And physiologically, the pineal gland transforms from a smooth silver bullet to a bumpy acorn-like emerald crystal, set to glisten iridescently like a Christmas tree, the human ego, and the divine avatar, respectively. And the basis for the myths attributed to Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ. And now, the real magical superpowers of the silver bullet are accessed. Because when reality, from now on, enters the right eye of Ra, which is like the camcorder of the human machinery, like the video option on a mobile phone, the reality is transmitted to an activated and no longer closed third eye. And as our reality is mental and light, the pineal gland can now manipulate and change said reality before it emits it through the left eye of Horus to replace the seen reality with the imagined pineal gland reality. And yet, this can only be successfully done after the light crosses the whole brain to the back of the skull, which, in the human, 
has evolved so the light bounces in a 45 degree angle up to the crown of the head. 2. The seventh Sahasrara Chakra, whose tone is as in the sound of the breath, and whose color is violet to white. The planetary ruler is Uranus, whose name breaks down into Ur, which descends from the Greek Uraios, meaning cobra, and later the Latin Uraeus, and the one insane name given to the serpent adorning Egyptian pharaoh crowns, and Anus, meaning well, and the signet for Uranus is this signet, which depicts the seed of life and anus, and the ascending spinal fluid, and the cobra's hood, which extends right and left. These numerous tiebacks to the serpent and its venom, from the name of Uranus, the Uraeus, to the serpentine crawl of the masculine electric pingala, and feminine magnetic ida as they shift their polarities along the spine to even the way this pineal gland fluid is said to break things down and dissolve things like a serpent's venom are said to be the reasons why uranus portends major catastrophes cataclysms and other major societal breakdowns that lead to major paradigm shifts For example, astronomically, Uranus can be tied to the many water-based disasters, tsunamis, deep ocean earthquakes, and even nuclear disasters, as in the Fukushima nuclear disaster of March 11, 2011, during his stay in water sign Pisces, followed by a short stint in Cetus in mid and late 2012, during which time one of the deadliest Philippine typhoons, Ofa, and one of the most expensive hurricanes in America, Sandy, took place. And ever since entering fire sign Aries, the world has been consistently on fire, literally. 2020 began with Australia specifically devastated, as Uranus inches closer to Earth sign Taurus. There will be more, you guessed it, earthquakes, fires, droughts. And Uranus clearly being associated with devastating catastrophes that spread like wildfire can be associated with global viruses and pandemics. Disasters that will become increasingly more devastating with worse catastrophes. Yet the most important information about this is, for you, the lesson of the seventh chakra and Uranus, which is pure bliss. Bliss for bliss sake, with radical acceptance and supreme indifference toward it all. As you breathe for life's sake, so too bliss out for life's sake. Breathe bliss and life becomes it. The more and more you merge your personal will with the greater divine will represented by the 45th degree angle bridge that connects the 6th and 7th chakras, the greener and stronger your pineal gland becomes as it receives, transmits, and is encoded with the divine will from the very mind and thought of God, funnel to your emerald crystal antenna which becomes imprinted with them, like some emerald tablets of thought. All of which are the powers promised by the proverbial silver bullet, your very own pineal gland, just waiting to be activated. But the good news is you already possess it. And if you know the story of Jesus Christ and believe, then this should give you even more reason to believe because this teaching was the very mission of the true historical figure we know as Jesus Christ, Jehoshua ben Azariah, who not only mastered this knowledge, but used it to resurrect himself, which, when he did, the sound of seven trumpets 
from every one of the planets and the very myth from which the biblical seven trumpets originate blared through the cosmic menstruum of the solar system changing earth's axis and the constellations of the ecliptic along with the calendars resulting from the subsequent conflagrations and catastrophes experienced all over the world. And if you're wondering, well, wouldn't these conflagrations and catastrophes be recorded by cultures all over the world and around the same time? The answer is a resounding yes. In the next Occult Secrets Revealed, we will discover the truth behind our modern day Gregorian calendar, the epoch of time we call the Middle Ages, and how all of it was a ruse to hide the most jealously guarded secret of all time, the truth of time itself, and the significance it has on our own human timeline. Ever wondered how such a human being, like the biblical Jesus Christ, could change the whole world. It's because he did. He shifted everything from the length of the year, the ecliptic, the amount of full moons in one year, to even the seasons. Thus, times of sowing, harvesting, and reaping, the very backbones of a civilization. And we will discover the many civilizations, cultures, kings, and royal astronomers who struggle to update their calendars and their tradition clinging populations, many of whom could not adjust and just simply died off. We will even discover a prophecy written in the stars that indicate that our own world and civilization as we know it will end and be forever changed by the year 2025 and why. So, how does it feel to know the truth? And now that you know, what are you going to do with it for yourself and the world you desire for yourself? Be sure to drop it in the comments and add to the thriving conversation. I read each one and sometimes add my own two cents or paragraph to it. Because it's your evolution that becomes mine and I can't do this without you. So be sure to subscribe to join the growing community of learned initiates and truth seekers to, one day, truly make the world a better place. And if you would like to support me in keeping this channel thriving, consider becoming a member with perks like early access to podcasts of audios that will turn into the video format, and with your support, a monthly astronomical message on the sun, moon, the planets, and which days for you to focus on for the continued energization of your seed of life, from the Holy Grail to the Silver Bullet. A deep thank you and special shout out for your super thanks. YouTube doesn't tell me who it is. Any help goes a long way for this one man production. Until next time, trust and believe that it is okay to be you the most beautiful you there ever was, there is, and that there ever will be, because you are not a story that can be told twice, and there will never again be a stage for you to perform but this one, right here, right now. So be you, the most beautiful you.